Hello, my name is Jason Kelly, Application Specialist here at Excitec. Today I'm going to be introducing you to the new Inventor 2021 software. I'll be showing you some of the new enhancements and how they can be applied into your practices. This year, Autodesk have looked at improving the software in four key areas. Firstly, performance. As with every release, they aim to make Inventor more efficient for users, improving not only speed, but overall capability. Modernization. They have carried on updating toolbars to fit in with the fully dockable theme they are producing. This year, updating tools such as Coil, Thicken and Offset, and Delete Face. After a lot of requests, Autodesk have also incorporated a dark theme, which I'll be using throughout this video and will continue to use day to day as a nice addition to the software. They have also improved the interoperability between Inventor and BIM models. We will come on to this later in the video. The fourth area they have looked at improving is automation, reducing lengthy procedures by creating tasks and routine using iLogic. Also improving repeatability tasks by adding presets to frame generator and improving the template sheet set formats in drawings. These have all been incorporated into the general enhancements for the software, which I'm going to be demonstrating and giving you some examples of how you will use these in your day to day work. Let's switch into the software and take a look. First of all, you notice as soon as I've opened the software, the dark theme. The dark theme can be accessed via your application options. This is under the colours ribbon and then under the drop down of theme. You can choose the standard light theme or you can switch to the new dark theme. What you'll also notice is this new highlight new drop down under the get started ribbon. When you're upgrading, this is quite nice as it, you may be upgrading from a previous version such as 2018 to 2021. This will now highlight all of the new features from that version. We'll first take a look at the general part enhancements. Autodesk have now added the group by windows to allow you to select multiple bodies in a single part file. This is the standard function um, for the rest of Inventor. What I find most useful about this is if you were top down modelling, it gives you the ability to create quick sub assemblies when you have a high number of bodies. So in this example, if I was to use the hand and finger grip, I could quickly highlight and select all of them and then take them through to make a quick sub assembly. This is also going to prove key when working in the woodwork environment. Moving on to some further part improvements. The 3D annotation tool has been enhanced, adding the ability for custom properties into your leader text. In application, this will be useful for the ability to make custom properties consistent throughout the business, with examples such as custom material or appearance names, and even part numbers in assemblies. Unwrap was a new tool added in 2020 and has been updated in 2021 with some new features. Firstly, you can now align not only to the model, but to an origin plane. You can do this by looking underneath at the alignment panel. You are now able to also select coplanar holes to stay rigid. What's nice about this is it will keep the set distance when creating flat patterns for fabrics or stamped parts. Finally, you now have the ability to edit the name of the unwrap. Just a quick tip with this, if you select F2 when you've selected on the feature, it will take you straight into the rename function. Sticking in the toolbar, the extended information tool has been developed to include further commands such as mirror and now all of your work features. This tool is quite hidden and in training a lot of people have found this useful, especially for analysing holes, as it gives details such as hole diameter and termination. To turn this on, go to the three lines drop down to display preferences and tick on show extended names. The flange tool in the sheet metal environment has been adapted to now allow for a reference face. In this example, I'm going to adapt flange five to align to this face. This new tool sits under the flange angle drop down. Select on the by reference and then choose the desired face. What I like about this is it will adapt the geometry's length for you so that it aligns with the reference face. In practice, this is going to be very appropriate when creating enclosures and small lips that need to be aligned and will save time calculating the distance. 
Autodesk have given the Frame Generator tool a massive overhaul, updating a number of areas. If we jump into adding a frame member, you will see they have updated the style to align with the modernised theme. This is across all of the Frame Generator tools. They have also gone and added presets to again improve consistency throughout business and to save time on repeating tasks. Again, this has been copied to all of the tools for Frame Generator. For this example, I am going to show you the reuse command. As with previous releases, you first select on the frame member you wish to reuse and then choose the new location. Just underneath, you have new zoom options to allow you to choose the location of the frame, now having reference to the other geometry. You can also move and rotate the geometry using the guiding arrows to align to the desired location. This is going to prove very handy for people who are trying to align to a specific edge. The camera for this zoom option is brought perpendicular to the end face. A further addition is the ability to be able to change the appearance in the frame member insertion dialog box. The appearance is shown will be from your default appearance library. This is going to prove beneficial when trying to differentiate frame members, especially when using the reuse command, as you'll be able to give the appearance for all members of that category and size. You can then accept and create your standard reuse. The new addition for the reuse command is that you are now able to reuse a reused member, which sounds a bit strange, but taking a look, if you select on a reused member, it will reference back to the original part. The middle zoom option pans and zooms so that the frame member is fit to the window. This then has your alignment options in the middle, which you can alter. If you select on the back arrow, this will then take you back to your previous view. I'm just going to add the final member and as you can see it's adding it under the original frame member in the tree. Another function they have added is the capability to use the trim slash extend tool to a curved face. In this example of a domed roof you may need to trim or extend the frame to this curved face section. Firstly extend. It works as normal by first selecting the face you want to extend to and then choosing the members you wish to extend. I'm going to repeat this process but instead trim the new members. Just to point out with this one, the members will always be cut to a straight edge even though the member is going to a curved face. The final addition to Frame Generator are the new custom C and T templates. In 2020, Autodesk brought in the custom I template to allow further customization of the notch profile. This has now been extended to the C and T shapes. As you can see in this example, a notch is required. As with the previous version, first select on the member you wish to cut and then choose the member of the profile you wish to trim it to. It will then give you the options available for that cut. In this example it is the custom C template and you can go ahead and make edits to this. Here are all the rest of the custom templates available. Additions to creating sheet formats has now been included to speed up drawing creation. To do this you will need to open up your drawing template. This is usually saved in a standard location but you are able to find this under your project settings. The first thing you will need to do is create the design for your standard drawing. Previously, the only things pulled through to the sheet formats were your drawing resources, mainly title block, border and your sheet properties. If we take a look, you can include things like sheet size and page layout. In 2021, you can now include a number of other features. Let's start by adding a few of these in. Firstly, your main views. If I place the main view and project a view off of it, and then I can create a 3D view which is shaded. Inventor now has the capability to bring this through to a sheet format as well as scale to fit to view the page. I'm also going to add a number of other features in such as parts list and general notes. This includes some of the other aspects of a drawing which we will be able to standardise. These other things include sheet metal settings and general slash generic tables.
Once I'm happy with how my standard layout looks, I can then save this as a sheet format by right clicking on the sheet and selecting create sheet format. I can then name this and make sure to check the tick box if I want the scale to change per drawing. Now I can save and close the template. Make sure you're in the template file rather than in just a standard drawing file, otherwise this won't be saved across the company. Just a note for this one, on the template you will have to delete the sheet out, otherwise it will be trying to load in this model each time you create a new sheet. To do this, you can just delete the sheet and replace it with a blank one. I can then jump straight into the drawing or go to the new option where I can see my sheet formats and choose my new sheet set format. For this example, I'm just going to create a new drawing and add it in from the drawing resources. Now you will see when I place a new drawing, it has kept all of the features but changed the model inside the view. I can then alter and make the normal amendments to the drawing. This is going to prove a massive time saver for companies who produce standardised parts. It's definitely going to be worth the time going through and setting this up. A couple of extra improvements to drawings include the parallel dimension function, which includes the diameter symbol. If this isn't set, you can choose it by first selecting on the desired dimensions lines, right click and go to dimension type, then choose parallel dimension. The final drawing improvement I'm going to show is they have now adapted the measure tool to work in the drawing environment. This is a massive bonus for me as I use this all the time. If you don't, you can get to it under the tools menu, or you can use the shortcut using the letter M. Moving back onto the interoperability between Revit and Inventor, this has been improved so not only now can you read Revit 3D data in Inventor, but this also allows for accurate and up-to-date models when editing in Revit to the Inventor model. It will flag as the standard Inventor update command to show the file is out of date. This is going to be a great benefit for companies working with AEC clients and creating and exporting to BIM models from Inventor. Excitec Toolkit from Inventor is now fully compatible with Inventor 2021. It has had a revamp and bug fixes have been included from the 2020.1 version. If you have any questions about how to install or license the toolkit, or any questions about the video, feel free to get in contact with us.